We have people from all uh, across the province here tonight, and we have people on their boats, and people coming in the harbor, and people in their houses, and we are having a great, great evening in, under God's canopy, and we're going to proclaim the gospel in song and word, and we're in for a great night. So good to have our friends from the Anglican Church, and some of those folks will be ministering in song as well. And then right after tonight's event, uh, we have uh, the barbecues going in the playground up here, which is up and to our right. And uh, we're going to be serving some hot dogs and some cold beverages up there a little later after our event. So please, tonight, if you would like to stop by uh, the playground uh, before you leave, you grab a hot dog and say hello. Uh, that would be great. I want to thank everybody tonight who has been involved and helping this uh, to become a reality. Uh, so many people uh, helped to set up the parking and the music and everything else and the people with the barbecue. Uh, this all happens because people are willing to volunteer and to be involved and we thank them uh, very much. So tonight I encourage you to come and get a seat. Uh, if you can't see where you are, you're more than welcome to come and, and grab a seat. If you want to stay where you are, that's fine as well. And we want you uh, to enjoy the music and the fellowship this evening. And uh, we have many specials lined up. And we'll do some congregational hymns as well. And at the end, I'll come and share a little devotional. And uh, tonight, I'm sure we're in for a great, great time. We're going to open with a word of prayer before my wife comes, Pastor Jennifer, uh, to lead us this evening. Father God, I thank you for this privilege to come in beautiful Port of Grave Harbor. And to proclaim the gospel message in song and word. We thank you for such a beautiful evening to do so. We pray your presence will be here. We pray that your blessing and your favor will be upon us. And we pray, Father God, that what is said and sung and done tonight would bring honor and glory to your name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen, amen. We have a, a special prayer request tonight that we're going to remember a little later on. Uh, and Effie Boom was getting ready uh, to come tonight, and uh, while she was getting ready in her driveway, she, she had a fall, and uh, so Nell is uh, on her way to Carboneer, and uh, so uh, a little later when I come, uh, we will have special prayer uh, for Aunt Effie as well, that God uh, would be with her this season. So God bless Pastor Jennifer. Enjoy your evening. Feel free to, to chat, sing along, and uh, we're going to have a great night together. God bless. Well, tonight we're going to start off with a hymn uh, at our Hymns in the Harbor event. We're going to start off with Glory to His Name. We're going to sing that one together. And uh, after this hymn, we will have two specials, one by uh, Melissa Norris and the second one by Wayne Morgan. So you can come uh, respectively in that order after this hymn. Glory to his name.
Okay, this song uh, shows this song uh, was a Mabel Carter song. Carter the family released it in 1954. Johnny Cash did it in 1964. One of the main reasons I decided to do this song was he was called Trouble, Troublesome Waters. But one of the main reasons was because Charlotte told me I had to do this song. <laughs>
Well, we're going to join in singing another hymn together. I know some of you were singing Amazing Grace as well, but I'm going to ask you if you would continue to sing with us. If uh, those who are sitting, if you want to stand at this time, we're going to sing uh, My Savior's Love. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. After this hymn, we're going to have our last two specials for the evening. It will be Harris Tucker and Valerie Pierce. So you can come after we sing this hymn. Journeys 
through the long dark night out on the open sea my faith alone and sigh
as I face the raging sea, but the anchor holds in spite of the storm. Well, oh, the anchor holds on the ships.
Wow, what singing tonight. Let's give everybody a round of applause and a tune of the horn again. Great. Great job, everybody. And so good uh, to be here this evening in the harbor. And uh, for the next few moments, I just want to share briefly with you. And again, right after uh, this evening, uh, we will head uh, to the playground and uh, we have uh, the barbecues going there and there's some picnic tables there for some of you if you would like to sit and relax and enjoy fellowship with one another and some nice cold uh, drinks as well I don't know about you but I'm thirsty this evening too much salt meat again for dinner I always do it never learn my lesson tonight uh, uh, I'm not sure if Reverend Strong is here. He texted me earlier and uh, said he wasn't sure if he was going to be able to make it. He's under the weather and has a touch of uh, pneumonia as well. And I know this is his last Sunday, uh, but we, uh, we have a cake uh, for Reverend Strong at the playground uh, to wish him well and to uh, celebrate his ministry here amongst us. And so whether he's here or not, we're going to eat his cake, okay? <laughs> All right, we're going to eat his cake whether he's here or not. So please uh, join us afterwards in the playground uh, for a time of food, fellowship, and Reverend Strong's cake. All right, so we'll make sure we take lots of pictures and then make sure he sees it. Uh, again, before we uh, go uh, to the Lord in prayer this evening, uh, we just want to remember uh, an F.E boon as we do. Father God, I thank you for this privilege of coming into this beautiful harbor and uh, participate in hymns in the harbor and to have a time of fellowship like this together. I thank you that such freedom is allowed to us that we can come and, and, and do this and celebrate the good news of the gospel. So I pray, Father God, as we uh, go to your word that you would help me, that you would be my strength and that you would help me communicate clearly the word of God. I pray as well for NFE tonight, Lord, uh, this unfortunate incident. I pray that you would be with her. I pray she would know your presence and she would know your peace in this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Just a reminder that next Sunday night is our final Carnival Church for the summer, September the 2nd. And we had an amazing turnout last uh, month uh, for our first Carnival Church. And so from five to six, there will be a concert with some local talent, uh, people of all, age of all ages, some of our children will be involved. Uh, there will be carnival games happening again on our parking lot, ice cream and lots of fun things. And then at six o'clock, uh, we'll move into our open air, our normal drive-in service. And followed by that, again, we will have a time of food and fellowship with one another. So please, next Sunday, we'd love to see you all up on our churchy parking lot for our carnival, final carnival uh, church of the year. For just a few brief moments this evening, I want to share on the topic entitled, Jesus, the Anchor of the Soul. When I was preparing for this message, of course, we had originally scheduled hymns in the harbor for a previous time, but unfortunately, due to the events of the passing of Wayne, uh, of course, out of respect for the community and the harbor and the people here in Porter Grave, uh, we decided to postpone that event uh, to, uh, until to tonight. And so all that week, uh, as I was preparing for this event and preparing on what to, to briefly talk about, I could not get the portion of scripture out of my mind, Hebrews 6, 19 and 20, which states, we had this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner, Jesus, has entered on our behalf. He has become the high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Now, now, it is important to note right from the beginning this evening that anchors were a popular symbol in the day and age of which scripture was written. You know, anchors were a symbol that was seen all throughout society. Historians and scholars tell us that 
uh, in the catacombs of the underground graves, they would see anchors carved out on the walls of these places. Historians and scholars also tell us that on their currency, on their money, one of the most popular uh, uh, inscriptions upon their currency was that of an anchor. Again, historians and scholars tell us that, that, that the artwork of the day would often include pictures of an anchor. And so for these people who, who the writer of the Hebrews was writing to, when he had mentioned the word anchor, it was not a foreign symbol or a foreign object. You see, of course, an anchor in biblical times, it served the same purpose as an anchor would serve today. Of course, I'm sure most of us know the, the purpose of an anchor. It serves to, to keep a boat from floating adrift and, and, and from getting off course, even when it's windy, even when the storm is raging. An anchor can prevent a vessel from moving in these dangerous conditions. The only other time scripture where we see the word anchor is in Acts 27, which describes a, a very powerful story of Paul when he was caught in a storm which eventually led him to being shipwrecked. But here in the book of Hebrews, the biblical writer tells us that the Christian hope is like an anchor. And as far as we know, it is the only place in the early writings of the church where this analogy is used. And to make things a little more intriguing, the biblical writer says that the anchor penetrates into the inner place behind the curtain. <laughs> now, 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 in my former life when I was young, okay, I was a fisherman, believe it or not. I was a fisherman. I fished for seven seasons. I fished on the Bobby Lynette too. I fished on the Lynette Marie that unfortunately sank uh, the, the year after I got off. Uh, I fished on the Ocean Glider. I fished on uh, the Newfoundland Princess. I even made a trip uh, here in Porter Grave. Uh, when I was leaving Porter Grave to go to Labrador, uh, I made a trip with, with uh, Glenn Petten on his boat. I believe I made a couple, two, three trips uh, with him uh, that year. And, and so I know a little bit about fishing. I, I won't say I'm an expert. Uh, but I do know a little bit about fishing, about crab, and, and about shrimp, and, and I know a little bit about boats. I grew up around boats. We would always uh, be out in Notre Dame Bay, being from Lewisport, and uh, my uncle and my friends had cabins out the bay, we called it. And so I, I know a little bit about boats, and I definitely know that an anchor doesn't belong behind a curtain. That's one thing I, I, I do know, that the anchor does not belong behind a curtain. So what on earth is the biblical writer talking about here? Saying that this anchor goes behind the curtain. Well, 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 let me explain to you folks this evening briefly for the next eight to nine minutes what this author was talking about. You see, for the audience here, the book of Hebrews is primarily Jewish. They were Jewish people who this writer was writing to. And again, the Bible is, is full of relevancy. The writer here, his mind goes to an event in their culture, in the Jewish culture, which we would recognize as part of the Old Testament system, the Old Testament sacrificial system. His mind goes to a great moment in their year as a part of their culture where the high priest goes in behind the last curtain into the innermost sanctuary of the temple. We would call it, the Bible calls it the Holy of Holies. And it is here once a year. It is here where it's considered to be the most holiest place on earth. The place where you were as close as possible to God. Where the high priest and him only would make an atonement for the sins of the people. He would go and he would offer this atonement on behalf of the people. As God's priests. 
to make an atonement for the sins of the people. Of course, only the high priest could access this place. So essentially what the biblical writer is trying to portray, the imagery, the lesson that he is trying to tell the people of this Jewish audience is that he is telling them that today our high priest known as Jesus has gone in not into the earthly temple, but into the true sanctuary, heaven itself, and is seated at the right end of the Father, interceding on our, on our behalf. He is there, friends, on our behalf. He is there interceding for you and I. He is there as our connection to God the Father. He is there on our behalf so that we may have a relationship with Christ. You see, we are attached to an anchor like a metal chain is attached to a physical anchor. Jesus Christ is there in the very presence of God and he is there again on you and I. It is on our behalf. Friends, this evening we are anchored to the very presence of God. Friends, even when the winds blow, the tides can rise, the storms can rage. But friends, I want all of us to know that the anchor holds in Jesus Christ. You see, friends, this community as of late has been caused to mourn. This community as of late have had sickness and sadness. This community knows what it's like to have unexpected deaths. This community knows what it's like to have unexpected sickness. And friends, tonight I want you to know that even though the storm rages, even though the battle is raging, even though the seas are turmoil, I want you to know that in the midst of all of this, we have an anchor whose name is Jesus Christ that is interceding on our behalf at the right hand of the Father. He is there, friends. Friends, I want you to know this evening that we are not promised as believers that there won't be any storms in life. But we are promised that Jesus Christ will hold us firm and secure. Friends, Jesus is that anchor that all of us need in life. You know, I will never forget the evening after we spent seven weeks on the Labrador, we were fishing on the Labrador for seven weeks. Of course, eager to get home, eager to get home to see our loved ones and our families. The forecast wasn't that great. But again, after being gone for seven weeks, we decided that we would leave Charlottetown, Labrador, and we would head for Lewisport. Unfortunately, we ran into some very troublesome waters. And the storm was raging. And it was the only time in seven years that I could say that I was a little uneasy, <laughs> a little scared of what would happen. And nobody never really said a whole lot in those 24 hours when the storm was raging. But friends, I want you to know that life is like that as well. That sometimes the storm rages. Sometimes we don't know what to say. Sometimes we don't know where to turn. Sometimes we don't know what to do. But friends, I want you to know this evening that no matter the season we face, I want you to know that there is an anchor in Jesus Christ. That he will never leave us. That he will never forsake us. The Bible says that he's just as close as the mention of his name. I'm going to ask Jody Lynn, if Jody Lynn is around this evening, if she's still here. Uh, the Haven of Rest was a song that I had chosen to close out tonight. And so since she had sung it, I'm going to ask her to come and I'm going to ask her uh, to lead in that. If she is still here, she's still on this parking lot, I'm not sure. Um, with small kids and whatnot, but if she is, uh, she can find her way here and uh, Flora can uh, begin to, to play that softly, the haven of rest. You see, friends, Jesus is that anchor. He is sitting with the loving Father in heaven and he's there for you and I. And I, 
and today we can access that throne. He is there so that we can experience God and his presence so that we can have the peace that the Bible talks about. Friends, the peace of God is found in having that anchor in Jesus Christ. Friends, I believe that all of us need to accept the price that Jesus paid to intercede on our behalf. The price that was paid to, so that he could intercede on our behalf is that he died a gruesome death on Calvary's cross. That's what gave him access to the Father. We no longer have to go into a sanctuary here in Port of Grave. We no longer have to go and offer sacrifices once a year on behalf of the people. The Old Testament system is no longer needed because friends today, Jesus Christ went to that cross and his blood, his shed blood provided atonement for our sins once and forever. And now he's at the right end of the Father, and He is that anchor of the soul that all of us need tonight. So, friends, we ask you this very important question if you're in the sounding of my voice, wherever you may be, do you have that anchor? Is your soul steadfast and true in the rock that is higher than you and I? Friends, is your trust, is your faith in that anchor that will never be moved, in that anchor that is sure and steadfast, despite the storms and the raging waters and the waves of life and the seasons of, of, of uncertainty, does your anchor hold in Christ Jesus this evening? That's the question that all of us have to ponder tonight. Are we in that haven of rest? Does Jesus Christ anchor our souls? Jody, would you come and would you lead us tonight? I'm going to ask all of us if we would sing along with Jody tonight. Many of you know that as we sing together the haven of rest.
this evening and again uh, the parking people will help direct you off the parking lot if some of you wanted to walk to the playground you can do that as well there's some parking available over there and uh, we will see you uh, in a few moments at the playground uh, for a hot dog and a can of pop this evening god bless you thank you for coming and see you next sunday evening god